this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about the Leon Lee Galahad AIO240 RGB. This is a 240mm all-in-one cooler for your CPU, and this is an installation, unboxing, and setup video, where I'm also going to be showing you the installation process for a LGA1700 12th gen CPU, that's a core i7-12700K, but I'm also going to be talking about all the things that are included in the box, which as you can see there are quite a lot of different things. And this video I'm also going to cover benchmarks at the end. I'm also going to swap out the standard fans that are included with this AIO with Lian Lee's AL120s. But I'm going to show you the setup process for the fans that are included in the box as standard. And then I'm going to show you the setup process for the extra fans that I'm using. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to match the fans up to the ones that are in the Air Mini that you'll see at the end and you saw in the beginning clip. Now you can actually get two different variants of this AIO, it's worth bearing that in mind. And I essentially purchased the wrong one because you can actually get this with the fancier fans from Lee and Lee, so it's worth bearing in mind. But as standard, it does come with some RGB fans, and these are high static pressure fans, so they are designed to give you good cooling. And they are also RGB, and they come with two connecting cables, one for power and one for RGB. And that might seem intimidating, but actually the setup process for it is fairly straightforward. And I'll talk you through that as we go into it. There is a lot included in the box though, so it does look quite intimidating. Now, I was quite taken back by just how much there is in the box, because as standard Leon Lee products are generally really straightforward, and their AL120s and SL120 fans, for example, are really good because they're daisy chainable, they connect together with little clips, and they have very minimal amount of cables, whereas this thing doesn't. Now this AIO will work with both Intel and AMD setups and I'll leave all the specs in the description but it is interesting for a number of different reasons one of which is that that pump head is completely turnable so you can turn the top of it so you can adjust the positions which means that you can mount it in various different places in your case and you have a lot of different options and where to mount it and I'll talk to you about that a bit later on. It's also a very premium looking thing nice solid radiator good build quality design you can see a nice copper plate on the cpu pump for example when that's going to sit on the cpu the radiator itself is also really nice and it has good mounting options for your fans obviously and a good setup and the convenience of an all-in-one cooler is also the obviously the liquid is already included with inside that it's all ready to go so it's just a case of working out where you're going to put it in your case plugging it all in setting it all up and away you go one thing of note that is interesting on this AIO versus a lot of other ones that I tested is there's no thermal paste pre-applied, but there is some included in the bag, so you do have to put it on yourself still, but that's interesting. Also has a little magnetic circular disc that you can use to put into the middle of the cooler if you don't like the Leon Lee logo, and that changes the aesthetic ever so slightly, which is fairly interesting. Now in the box you also get this massive bag of cables and various other things and it looks pretty intimidating especially when you start breaking out the cables and trying to work out where they go and what you do with them but don't worry because hopefully by the end of this video it'll be a lot clearer especially if you're doing an LGA 1700 like I am and there are two different brackets for Intel and they are clearly labeled and I'll show you those in a minute a bit closer look and there's a multiple different standoff screws as well. You also have attachments for AMD that you'll see in this little bag that comes with the thumb screws and the extra silver backplate that you'll see there in a second is also for AMD. You have long radiator screws for screwing your fans onto the radiators and then shorter screws for screwing that radiator to the case. And you also have various different standoff screws depending on what you're using, whether it's LGA 1200, LGA 1700, or the other variations. And there's a slightly different shape and color, which makes it a bit easier. And there's all the information on the little leaflet that's included with the cooler. And that makes that a little bit more obvious on what you're doing. But hopefully, as I go through, you'll see what I mean. And I'll talk a bit more about it in a minute. And then you have a mass of cables included in there. And a little control box, which is fairly interesting because it means essentially that you can plug the fans RGB lighting into that control box and then you can control it by just pressing buttons and changing through the various color schemes. You'll also notice that there's a Y splitter cable, two connections at one end and a single connection at the other. This is to connect the power up for the fans 
So you're essentially connecting both fans, power up to one cable, and then plugging that single cable in to a system fan header on your motherboard. Now that's one option, and I'll talk a bit more about that. There's also this daisy chain cable, which is for your RGB lighting. So you connect up two cables RGB for the fans and then other things. And then you also have the option to connect up instead and connect to the RGB header on your motherboard rather than that control box and other cables to connect the pump head to SATA power and the control box to SATA power and it just looks when you should get all this out it's like whoa there's too many cables what's going on what am I meant to do with all these things and it's quite intimidating I think if you are new to this this could be a bit much but hopefully once we get to the end you'll find it a bit easier and then obviously the thermal paste for applying to your CPU and I'll show you that as well so you do have everything that you need it just looks a bit sort of scary at first now there are two cables coming out of the pump head itself one is for power and the other is for RGB. They recommend connecting the power one to the AIO pump header on your motherboard. And that's worth bearing in mind because usually some will recommend going to the CPU fan header. And you could possibly do that as well if you do have issues and you may have some other problems that I'll talk a bit about later on as well. Now the fans have two connections as I said already. You have the power connection that you can see here and the RGB connection. They do look quite different so it is very difficult to get these wrong they won't plug in to the wrong places so you can't get it wrong but on the right hand side is the power and left the RGB connection now obviously each of these fans has two cables so there's a lot of cables to deal with but you do have these daisy chain connections which makes life a bit easier both the Y splitter for the power cables and then the daisy chain connections for the other ones so I'll show you the Y splitter first and I will also be talking about the AL120s in a minute, which are far superior in terms of the connectivity because you have a lot less cables. Now you see the Y splitter cable, essentially what this does is it takes the power from both fans and turns it into one single connection. This makes life a lot easier. These fans will be going on the radiator and then you'll be connecting them up to a system fan header on your motherboard to give you control over them and obviously run them at certain speeds to keep the radiator cool and then obviously cool liquid inside it and then keep that running nicely to keep your CPU cool and running efficiently. And I will be testing that at the end of this video, but not with these fans. But they obviously are very similar to Lee and Lee's because they're both going to be Lee and Lee fans anyway. So connect up these two cables together and then you just need to find the right header on your motherboard. You refer to the manual for that, but you want a PWM controllable fan header and just pick one that's nearby, I'd suggest, to the radiator. That is one part of that done, so that's ready to go. Obviously, this is the initial process. So I'm going to show you all the sort of wiring outside of the case because it makes life a lot easier. You can just sort of suss out how it goes. The next bit is the RGB connection. This is a long daisy chain cable. You see multiple connections on it. On one end, it's quite different to all the other ones because that connects to the control box, and I'll show you in a second. So the RGB connection goes in here, and you can see the way it goes in because there's a little pin on the middle which basically slips in there is a four pin RGB connection and that's worth noting because there is a slight difference in the setup the one from the pump head for example is only three pin instead of four so slightly different cables slightly different connections and you connect up the two fans and then you move on to the next bit now it's worth noting that this cable seems to be the same for the 240 as the 360 which means you have a spare connection that isn't being used because it's accounting for an extra fan that you don't have so it's worth bearing in mind don't panic if you find that you've got a cable which has one empty connector on it which it will do now at the very end of that cable you'll see that that then has a cable that connects up to this other one so you can see that you have uh, several different extra cables included and this is one of them so you connect that in there and this cable has two connections on it and one is for the three pin RGB connection from the pump head so you can connect that up too so now you've daisy chained up basically the fans and the pump head and that has a little connector that connects to one end of the little control box this control box gives you manual control over the RGB lighting for everything and there's instructions in the manual on what sort of settings that can go through. But obviously you need to find somewhere inside or at the edge of your case where you can access it to be able to press this. And I don't really like the idea of having a hardware button on here. I think that's a bit of a mess. I don't know whether you're going to want to press a button on the inside. 
but it is an interesting option, not one I've seen before. And then you plug in the little other connector for your SATA power. So you need to then plug this into the power supply unit SATA power connections. So I'll show you a bit later on with that. And that is one option for the setup. The interesting thing about this all-in-one core is it gives you different options in how you connect things up. The other thing is that the CPU fan header, the AIO pump header that I mentioned earlier, you can also just correct that directly to your SATA power, which is again fairly unusual. So there's two options there. You either connect to the AIO pump header or directly to the SATA power on your power supply unit. The same for the RGB connections, there are two options here as well. So instead of connecting up to the little control box, you can remove that entirely and not bother with it. And then you can use this connection instead. Now this one does the same sort of logic in that you connect both the RGB from the fans and the RGB from the pump head to the two different connectors on there. And then you have this RGB connection which goes to the RGB header on your motherboard. That then gives you RGB control on your motherboard via your motherboard software. In my case it's the Asus ROG Armory Crate software but it'll also work with other things MSI's Mystic Lite for example and other RGB software in there. I think this is a more standard way of doing it and a bit more logical. So I'm giving you another shot now of the process from a different angle just in case you need it because it is a bit tricky. So once again you can have the option to use that hardware connection daisy chaining up the two fans and then the pump header connecting the small connection on the end of that daisy chain cable into the top of the little control box that has the plus sign on the top of it and you have basically plus and minus to cycle through the various different RGB effects and then at the bottom of that there's another connector which has the SATA power connection on it. You'll note there's two little SATA cables and you can't use the wrong one so the good thing about all these cables is it's basically impossible to plug them into the wrong thing because they're all different sizes and shapes and connection types so you don't need to panic too much about oh no I've plugged the wrong cable in here because it's not really possible to do so that is worth bearing in mind as well. The other thing that is unusual, I think, as I mentioned already, is plugging in the SATA power directly to the pump head. I don't think I would do this personally. You can do it, but I don't think I would. It's much better to plug it into the AIO pump connection header on your motherboard because that gives your motherboard control of the AIO pump and an idea of how it's running. Otherwise, your motherboard's going to have no oversight of how that is running and what is doing, which seems a bit strange. You will still have the control over the fans, but not over the AIO, so it's a bit strange, but it is interesting that you have a variety of options here. I will also show you the RGB connection a bit later on to where you plug that in, so that's that final option that you have directly into the motherboard, and then give motherboard control to the RGB lighting instead, which is preferable in my mind, because it means it can sync it up with other things that you might have in your system, whether that's RGB RAM or other peripherals. Now, with the back plates, you'll see that this one's 1150, for example, and there are other variations of that. And then this is the LGA 1700, which is the one we're going to be using. So these are slightly different. So it's worth watching out for the little markings on there so you know you're using the right one. And then you have the various different standoff screws. So there are three different sorts of standoff screws for Intel. You have two lots of silver, and one lot of silver is for Intel's 12, 11, 12, 66 bracket, and they've got the thick, coarse thread on top, so they're the thicker ones at the top above the bulbous bit. Then you have the black ones for the LGA 1700. They actually look gun metal to me, but they're listed as black. And then the other silver ones with the finer thread, that's for LGA 1150 and 1200, so various different options. But here you can see the gunmetal ones for the LGA 1700. So just demonstrating where they would be positioned or how. So they'd be pushing, positioned like this, so the chunky bit is at the bottom. Now obviously you wouldn't set this up like this. That back plate needs to go through the motherboard and then these thumb screws, standoff screws, go on top of it and connect it up. But this just to give you an idea of what it would be like. They will then come through the other side and poke through the pump head and then you put them into place with the thumb screws that are included in the bag and then that just seats everything down over the CPU. Obviously you need to apply the thermal paste first but I'll show you that process in a minute. 
Then I want to do a comparison now of the AL120 fans. So you can see these on the right hand side. These are superior fans in my mind. They're nicer looking in various different aspects. You can see I've done a video to compare the AL120s and the SL120s that I'll link to in the description. Those are different uni fans from Lee and Lee that connect together with various different connectors and they end up only having two cables on the end of them and you can connect up to multiple different cable connections. You can have four different fans connected up and still only have two cables coming out of them versus the standard fans included with this AIO which have two cables each so a lot more cables to deal with. You'll also notice simple things like the back of the AL120s is nicer looking because you have the little silver thing in the middle. You have a nicer looking logo on the front as well and they are just generally nicer looking. Now I'm going to use these for the demonstration but I've already showed you how to use the standard ones if you want to. In this orientation what I'm doing here is setting the fans to be intakes. I'm going to be pulling cold air in from the back of the case over the radiator to cool it and then pulling it into the case. So that's set up this way. The rear of the fan is where the air is going to come through, be pulled through. You could theoretically do it the other way. It really depends on your case, but I'll show you the setup process for mine and what it's going to look like at the end. But I found that this is the best setup for this case and the position I'm going to be putting it in. So this is how I'm mounting it. Also notice that I'm mounting it so the cables are at the bottom because that'll make it easier to run them to the back. I then have two cables which I'll then need to connect up to the control box. And so I will be showing you how to do that in a minute because these fans come with their own control box and you can control up to 16 fans depending on your setup and how they're connected together and the size of your case etc. And then you just have two connections per group that then connect up. And so there's a lot of different potential options there. So now with the back plate, you need to take off the 3M stickers. It's double-sided sticky tape, obviously. This then holds that in place. So I have the motherboard here. This is a Strix Z690 motherboard with the Intel i7-12700K CPU already in place and XPG RGB RAM as well. So I should have a nice effect at the end. I've done a video separately on this motherboard if you're interested and also one on the Lee and Lee Air mini case as well if you want to see that I'll link to those in the description. Now the back plate basically sticks on at the rear and it's fairly unusual because usually you do it in a sort of portrait style but actually this would sort of sit on top of the pins on the back of the motherboard so you actually have to mount it the other way around and so you basically put in the two fat bits at the top and bottom and then that then sticks over the back there and it shows you in the manual how to do this but you basically just stick it into place those 3m stickers will hold it in place a little bit while you put the standoff screws in so they're not meant to permanently mount it obviously to the back and uh, not that super sticky and this basically holds it in place temporarily where you go about putting those standoffs in that i showed you a minute ago interesting thing about this motherboard is it has two holes in it so you can actually use an lga 1200 bracket if you don't happen to have the lga 1700 bracket included in there for some reason so you actually have various mounting options for this because it's a slightly different setup with the new lga 1700 so that's worth bearing in mind too and then you just have to put the standoff screws in now i did find that these are quite fiddly and you do need to obviously tighten them up as much as possible to make sure the back plate's nice and solid and that the CPU block will mount nice and solidly down onto the system. And I found that because they're sort of chunky at the bottom and then thin on top, they're really hard to get hold of because it's hard to grip at the bottom of them, especially around the VRM. So the big plastic shielding around the edges of the CPU is very difficult to do, very difficult to grab hold of. But if you can get in there and really tighten them up so they're nice and tight and there's no wobble in them because there will be if you don't tighten them up properly. And then that could lead to the CPU not being seated properly with the pump head and then obviously it won't give as much cooling and it won't be as good in that department so it's worth watching out for that. So now I have all that set up. Now the next stage is basically planning out where you're going to put it in your case. You could actually do this earlier because then it'll give you an idea of where you're going to do the fans but in this instance I'm basically trying to suss out where I'm going to put it and it's worth doing this before you start the installation process because it gives you an idea of how you're going to mount things. You have a load of different mounting options for this, both the radiator positioning and for the pump head, because you can mount it any way you want, because the pump head is turnable, which means that you can choose to have the AIO pipes in any position. You can have them on the left-hand side, as I have here, or you can move it around so they're on the bottom, or you can move it around so they're on the top or the right. There are various different options there. And then you just can just simply turn the top of the pump 
to reposition that Lee and Lee logo. Also doing this means that you can sort of position where the cables are going to go for the power and the RGB because obviously you don't want them sort of dangling down into your system and making a mess and then you have to awkwardly sort of cable manage them and it's a bit of a pain. You might want to run them up to the top of the case and into the back for example and also work out where your AIO pump header connection is on your motherboard where that's going to be because then you can base that on where you're going to run those cables and there where you're going to position this as well. But you can see the cables, the pump tubes for the radiator connection are quite inflexible. They're quite tough to move around. Obviously that's good because it means they won't break and leak and it means you've got a nice sort of solid setup there but it does mean they're quite difficult to manipulate especially when you're not in the case the radio has not been held down the motherboard isn't by the way note that i've got this on anti-static bag so i'm not accidentally building up static and i am also using an anti-static mat that i am standing on at the moment to distribute the electrostatic from my body so i don't accidentally fry anything so keep those things in mind be very careful when you're doing things not to fry your components but you can see you also have the option to mount it down now the important point of note is to make sure that the pump head is not the highest point in your setup because you don't want your pump head to be at the top because that can result in air bubbles in up in the pump and then over time it will break so don't mount a radiator on the very bottom of your case however as long as the pump isn't the top part of the setup it doesn't really matter so you can mount it with tubes up don't listen to the people will tell you otherwise it doesn't really matter the other option is to mount the radiator on the top of your case which is another option both in this case and in general and you can mount it either this way with the pipes on the left hand side or you could flip the radiator and the whole system over and mount it the other way around with the tubes on the other side think about where you're going to place your fans in your case and what this might interfere with obviously in my instance this would also get in the way of the rgb from the ram which might not be as nice it might be preferable to have the tubes at the rear but then if you've got an exhaust fan at the rear those tubes could potentially get in the way of that blocking your exhaust fan touching it or just blocking the airflow from it so there's lots of different things to think about before you even start installing and i think it's worth doing this planning out what you're going to do and where you're going to do it i already know what i'm going to do because i've done it before in this case and i like to side mount the radiator here you'll see that i have three 120 mil fans on the top of the case so it makes sense to put a 240 mil radiator at the top there and the bottom obviously i can't use as i said you could mount the radiator on the front but I think having front intake fans is preferable because you've got air flowing through so in this setup just to quick reference for you what I'm doing is I'm intaking air with two 120 mil fans on the bottom and two 120 mil fans on the front so you've got air being pulled in from the front and the bottom and then exhausting hot air out the top and I'm also going to be pulling cold air in from the radiator on the side or back panel and so now I'm just installing the motherboard making sure it's all screwed down nicely and then I'm basically going to position the radiator in here now i found when i did this case build before that was actually worked better with a different radiator setup when the radiator was at the back of the case and the fans were then held in place on the front and passed through i'll link to that video in the description but the reason for that is basically the cable management and sort of way it sits you can see some of the fan is sort of hidden behind the front tray from the front fans on this case doesn't look as nice perhaps so you do have that option actually there's enough space at the back of this case to mount the radiator back there so loads of different options in terms of where you're mounting it but one of the reasons i wanted to talk about this is because cabling could be a problem it's worth checking your cables so i'm plugging in a usb c and usb cables there for the front panel connection and the main power supply cable for motherboard as well because that's a lot of cables on the right hand side and depending on your motherboard you might find that they stick out too far for you to be able to mount your radiator this way so this is another reason why you need to plan things out before you do it because you can see i'm having trouble for example getting the radiator and the fans into the case now that those cables are positioned in there but i did manage it in the end and it does end up looking pretty good then you need to get to the back of the case to then screw all the little tiny screws into the radiator to then hold it in place obviously you also need to hold on to the radiator while you're doing this i held on to the front of it and i screwed in two screws while i did that and then i laid the case flat and then screwed in the rest of them to hold them into position also i found don't screw them all in all the way 
because that means that then if you want to reposition the radiator, perhaps you want to move it up or down a little bit, you can do that. Once you've got the systems fully set up, you can then move the radiator up and down and then tighten those screws up. Now the controversial bit where I install the CPU thermal paste and people will tell me that I use far too much. I did that on purpose just to get those comments and that is exactly what I'm doing. And I will show you the thermal tests at the end to show that it did perform well despite my thermal paste usage. Now don't forget to remove the little sticky plastic cover on the pump head. That's an important part of it. It does have a big thing on it to tell you not to do to leave that on there, but it could still easily happen. So don't forget to do that. Take that off. Now we're seating the pump head down on top of the CPU and obviously making sure that's set down properly. And then you need to use the thumb screw. So you're setting it down on top of there and obviously put in each of the four corners over the standoffs that we've already installed in place. And then gently and carefully install the thumb screws in each corner. So do one corner, then the opposite corner, and then that will hold it down. I found that these thumb screws are fairly unusual. They do need a little bit of extra persuasion to go on. But you obviously also need to be careful not to over tighten them because you could damage the pin on the motherboard and damage the motherboard itself and that would obviously be bad but you also don't want it so loose that the pump isn't sitting properly on the cpu and then isn't cooling it properly as well and you'll soon find out that when you go into windows because it'll be running far too hot but the setup process as you can see is fairly straightforward nice and easy setup process and then we just need to find the aio pump header for the power connection that's coming out of here on my motherboard that is just below on the left hand side of the pump you can see there's two connections there one's for a system fan header the other one's for the aio pump but sometimes on other motherboards i've seen it on the top right of the motherboard so check your motherboard manual to see where that is we'll look closely at it for the little markings and then a little bit of peel and now we're on to the connection so this is the lian lee control box for the AL120s, you'll see you have a power connection and then an RGB connection. There are four lots of these. As I said, you can control up to 16 fans out of here in groups of four. And I'm connecting up all the case fans and the RGB connection for the fans to this control box. No, only the RGB because I'm going to connect the CPU up somewhere else. This control box then requires SATA power and it also has other connections as a USB connection. It also has an RGB connection that connects to an RGB header on your motherboard that you can see here. It has a system fan header power connection, so it has a PWM connection on it. It has this USB connection that connects to the bottom of the motherboard, and that will then give you control via Lee and Lee's L Connect software. It then has a fan connection, a PWM control as well. You need SATA connection. So you can see SATA connection on the power supply unit. If you don't know what that is already, it's a little connection here with a daisy chain cable. You use these for hard disk drives, SSDs, and fan control boxes like this. And also you'd use it for the hardware controls for the RGB lighting, if that's what you're planning on doing and using the standard fans that are included rather than the AL120s like I have. So that's that connection that you do there. And again, the same for that other power connection that gives you the option to connect the pump head directly to your PSU. I wouldn't do this, but if you want to, that's how you do it. And then obviously install your power supply unit in the case and then go about the process of making sure all your cables are tidied and it is connected. Now, as I said, I'm connecting the RGB connection from the fans that are on the radiator to the Lian Lee control box and not the power. So that would give me the RGB lighting control via L Connect software. But what I want to do with the power connection is to connect it up somewhere else. Now you can connect it to that control box and obviously that will then give you a system control over the fans. But what I want to do instead is use the Y splitter and the reason for this is simply because it gives me extra cable length to then connect it to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. The reason for this in my mind is that the fans on the radiator are related to the CPU's cooling and so it then gives the motherboard control. The other reason to do this is that if you plug it into the CPU fan header, your motherboard will recognize that it has CPU fans and it won't panic because one thing that you will find sometimes is if you plug in something to the AIO pump header, the motherboard will often complain that it doesn't know how fast your CPU fan is spinning and it may panic. If this happens, go into your motherboard software into, by pressing delete when you start your computer up. Go into there and find the CPU monitoring sec 
connection and turn off, set it to ignore the CPU fan speed, and then it won't get in a flap and it won't give you any more problems. Now we need to connect up the control box. So you find a PWM system fan header and run the single connection cable from that control box to that. And that will then give you PWM, which means you can control the speed of the fans via your motherboard software. The RGB connection for the control box or for your pump head are available. And you can see there's a three pin RGB connection on my motherboard on the top right. And that's where that plugs in. There's also one on the bottom. You'll have to check your motherboard manual to find out where it is. And there we have it. There is the finished and final product, the Leon Lee Air Mini and the Galahad with AL120 fans all round. And obviously standard RGB lighting out of the box, but it looks pretty nice. And the results are very nice as well. It's a very nice setup, really straightforward once you know what you're doing and it booted first time no problems it also runs nice and cool and quietly and obviously all the fans match which is a nice thing and a finally wonderful aesthetic i really like the pump as well it's nice and quiet runs effectively and really pleasantly and i'll show you benchmarks in a second but a close-up look of it and you can see the sort of rgb lighting and then obviously the Lee and Lee logo which is on there but if you don't like that you can use the magnetic disc put that over the top and then that's nicely hidden away and you can just enjoy the rgb now obviously the rgb on the pump head and on the fans is separately controllable in my case the way i've set it up i have the rgb connection i have to go into the motherboard software to then control the rgb light and you'll notice the motherboard lighting and the ram lighting sort of matches that rainbow effect on the pump head as well so you'd need to go into the motherboard software in order to change it and that's worth bearing in mind but you do also have the option to connect the pump head to the Leon Lee control box if you have a spare connection on there and now I'm in Windows running Cinebench R23 this is Windows 10 and you can see that I'm, I'm obviously recording with OBS at the moment and also running hardware monitor on the left hand side and you can see the package and core readouts in terms of the temperature readings for these. This isn't overclocked in any way. This is a standard clock, but it is running around a maximum of 80 degrees C once Cinebench stopped running through its thing. Cinebench is really aggressive and more intensive than your average gaming session or whatever else would be. So it actually runs really cool considering that because the i9 12900K and in this case the i7 12700k are known for running pretty hot so this is doing a really good job of keeping it cool and also i had the fans set to fast but not the quickest fan speed and so they're not running super obnoxiously loud the idea is you could obviously run them a little bit quieter and you still wouldn't be that much hotter or you could run them faster and cool it down even more but otherwise the performance is really good and very effective and is very nice another thing obviously important of note is that you can adjust things within armory crate and within l connect software if you want to find out more about l connect check out my video on the al120 fans or into a bit more depth on that because that's really for the fans rather than for the aio because it doesn't have control of the aio pump in the same way that you would with the fan connections and as standard you certainly wouldn't be using it because it's not designed for controlling the standard fans that come with this cpu cooler this has been the provoke prawn hope you found this video useful don't forget to check out the links in the description to the other videos that might be useful and the specs and more thanks for watching this has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.